Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner, and in today's preview to the 2022 Tour de France, I want to talk about the eight rider list on Team Ineos. Ineos have dominated the Tour de France throughout the last decade plus, with Wiggins winning, Chris Froome winning multiple times, Garrett Thomas winning in 2018, followed up by Egon Bernal, the Colombian rider, winning in 2019. Now, since 2019, they haven't won, and they've been falling apart tactically in my book on each of the last two years when we're talking about their tactics racing in the mountain stages here at the Tour de France. I don't like the way they've done their tactics and I'd like to see more of a waiting game that decides how they're going to play their tactics at this year's 2022 Tour de France. Now with this eight rider roster, it looks fantastic. They got strong depth and I'd call them the third strongest team at this year's Tour de France behind Jumbo Visma being the first strongest team, UAE Team Emirates being the second, but they have the number one rider in the world, Tadej Pogacar, the big time favorite to win the Tour de France. And I think actually could be the strongest of the teams because they don't not going to have to look after a Wout Van Aert trying to win the green, trying to win stage one, trying to win on the cobblestones, trying to win multiple stages throughout this Tour de France. So UAE Team Emirates, I actually see as the more solid team when we're talking about fighting for the general classification over Jumbo Visma. On paper, though, I can't argue that Jumbo Visma is the strongest team entering this year's Tour de France. Now third, Ineos. Garrett Thomas is my favorite here to lead the team out of the three GC riders between Danny Martinez and Adam Yates. Fourth climber on this, on this roster of eight is going to be Jonathan Castro Viejo, and it looks like, to my belief, he's going to be the rider that takes Kwiatkowski's role. Michael Kwiatkowski, the ex-road world champion, winner of Amstel Gold this year, and a past winner of Amstel Gold, so he's won him two times in his career. He won't make the start list here for Team Ineos because he has a muscle injury. I'll post up here his Twitter response here about the Tour de France. Now, when we start talking about other riders on Team Ineos, it's got to be Filippo Ganna. The first five stages, for certainly the first four stages, have to be absolutely the Filippo Ganna time here at Team Ineos. He could win the first individual time trial at just over 13 kilometers. It's tricky. It has a lot of turns, but we all know Filippo Ganna can time trial. He's a world time trial champion. And we know he can make it through the corners because this guy tears up the corners. So a course of 13 kilometers long, starting here up in Denmark, looks perfectly ideal for Filippo Ghana to be wearing yellow for Team Ineos. That right there, that one specific rider is the gold money maker right here for Team Ineos because he can take all the pressure off of the rest of the riders for the rest of the Tour de France when we're talking about having this race be considered a success. Filippo Ghana's role here on stage one is vital. Remember, he's not a pure sprinter, so he's probably not going to be able to make up time bonuses somewhere else if he happens to lose by two seconds to a Wout Van Aert in the first individual time trial here on stage one. Team Ineos need to focus total energy there on Filippo Ghana and then protect him throughout the next few stages so that he can stay in yellow until we get into the cobblestone stage on day five. Now, cobblestone stage for day five could be a day for Filippo Ghana, but remember they had Dylan Van Barley in there, this year's Paris Roubaix winner, and so stage five could be another repeat for Dylan Van Barley if they let him off the leash and he doesn't have to do too much work protecting Filippo Ghana's yellow jersey if he was to win stage one. So the first five stages here for Team Ineos look absolutely fantastic, and they could be the most dominant team at this year's Tour de France when we're talking about the first five stages. Now, when we look a little bit deeper on the roster for their super domestique work, it's going to be Luke Rowe there that has his hands full because he's the one rider that's going to have to work every day for his teammates, all seven of them. Tom Pidcock will make the list here of eight riders for Team Enos to start his first Tour de France. And let me remind you guys, it's Filippo Ganna's first time doing the Tour de France too. Tom Pidcock hasn't had his spectacular season. Last year was definitely much better when he had wins in the Classics and ran second to Walt Van Aert at the Amstel Gold by just a hair's width that we had to wait 20 minutes to figure out who won that race. Tom Pidcock, solid rider though, on good form, has come from a bit of a COVID scare though just before the Tour de France started. He said he was good and now he's on the roster. So look out for Tom Pidcock being aggressive after stage five. 
That's a rider along with Jonathan Castro Viejo that can co start covering those early attacks after stage five, talking about stage six and seven and possibly eight, nine even. Those two riders will have a shot of getting up the road and putting Yumbo Visma and UAE Team Emirates under a little bit of pressure. Now, the second half, or I should say after stage five of this year's Tour de France when the cobblestones finish, is the time, aside from those two riders of Tom Pitcock and Jonathan Castroviejo, their GC riders, Garrett Thomas, Danny Martinez, and Adam Yates, they have to stay calm as a bomb here at this year's Tour de France. They need to make their tactical plans, decisions made on what Yumbo Visma and UAE Team Emirates Tadej Pogacar do. If they want any shot at winning this year's Tour de France, and I have, to be clear, Garrett Thomas, I have down as my number three favorite at this year's Tour de France. I think he can go podium. And I think if he can bring that 2018 form, we could see a magical battle between Garrett Thomas, Tadej Pogacar, the two-time defending champ here at Tour de France, and Primoz Roglic from Jumbo Visma. But, but, this is a big but. Jumbo Visma have always been aggressive in the last two editions of the Tour de France early in the mountain stages. Here are their tactics. First five days, it's the Filippo Ghana show, possibly stay five, stay, stage five, Perry Roubaix, Dylan Van Barley, like I was saying. And from that point on, with the exception of Jonathan Castor Viejo and Tom Pitcock, those are the only two riders that I'm allowing to go up the road and try to put some pressure. That leaves their three GC guys. They have to be making quick and fast decisions, but all their decisions, all their tactics have to be dependent on on what Tade Pagaccia, Primoz Roglic, and Jonas Vinigo do to each other when we get into the mountains. In 2010, I was there racing for Radio Shack. It was Andy Schleck and Alberto Contador who were lighting up the race, much like I would expect to see from Tade Pagaccia and Primoz Roglic. But every time when those two riders, Contador and Andy Schleck, got up the road, they always hesitated. Neither one wanted to work. They would slow down, and it became a tactical nightmare for those two riders to figure out how they were going to win the Tour de France. Each time they slowed down, they allowed the pace to drop. When that pace drops on a stage at this year's 2022 Tour de France, when we're talking Primoz Roglic and Tadej Bogacar now, if that same tactic is employed and they start to drop the speed, once Enos and the other GC favorites like Vlasov start to catch back on, that's when these riders need to start attacking. So in the team meetings, every mountain stage is a wait and see game for Team Enos. They need to wait and see. Tade Pogaccia, Primoz Roglic, let the Yumbo Visma UAE Team Emirates dictate all of the tactics until the final moment when there's an open window of opportunity. And this will allow Garrett Thomas Daniel Martinez or Adam Yates, the possibility to slip away and gain some massive time on the general classification. Two big time favorites of Primoz Roglic and Tadej Pogacar. But Inos have to be magical. This first week from Filippo Ghana is incredibly important. If he wins that individual time trial, it will set up this Tour de France magical for Inos to later just sit back, relax, be under no pressure whatsoever because they've already been in yellow and they've already won a stage and then let their GC riders really battle, battle it out with tactical battles in the mountains. Tactical battles in the mountains, again, means being patient throughout the Tour de France, waiting until we get into the end of the second week, if not the third week mountains, before you start attacking. When we start looking at that stage 17 and 18, remember it's 140 kilometer stages, so a lot of riders have power. If the two Slovenians start playing those tactical games like we saw in 2010 from Alberto Contador and Andy Schleck, anything is possible back there amongst the other GC favorites as they could possibly slip away, gain a minute or two on the two Slovenians, and now we got a big battle and possibly another rider wearing race leader's jersey on the final 40 kilometer individual time trial. My first five favorites here, when we're talking about the Tour de France general selection, I got Tadej Pogacar as number one, Primoz Roglic number two, number three, Garrett Thomas, Vlasov, the Bora Hansgrohe rider number four, and Jonas Vinigo number five. 
Normally, I'd say before we go in the Tour de France, Jonas Vinigo is third, possibly even second best rider here on general classification. But I think Jonas Vinigo from Yumbo Visma is going to have to do some tactics early in the mountain stages that might cost him a little bit of energy and cost him some placings on the general classification versus what we saw last year in 2021 when Jonas Vinigo could just follow the wheels the whole time and attack on the last three or four kilometers before the summit of each of those mountain stages in 2021. So I got him marked down as fifth, but I see the rider as all class and possibly even above his teammate Primoz Roglic. But I don't know if he's going to get that option, so I have him as fifth on the general classification. Outside of top five, the other riders I have is Damiano Caruso from Bahrain Victorious, Adam Yates from Ineos in seventh, Ben O'Connor eighth from AG2R, Roman Bardet DSM if he has that spectacular form from the Giro and he can carry that form back over I think he can pull a top 10 here at the Tour de France and Enric Moss from Movistar is my final 10th place rider I'm going to throw out one wild card rider out there too and I'm going to call him Thibaut Pino because Thibaut Pino in 2019 I thought was the most dominant rider of that year's Tour de France but then of course another injury pulled him out of another Grand Tour finish I don't know if he can make it to the finish, but one thing's for certain. I believe inside his body, inside the possibilities of Thibaut Pino, that he could have a spectacular Tour de France if the stars would finally line up for him without any injuries or any bad luck coming into the Tour de France. His arsenal of tricks have gotten much better on the descents now. He's a little bit rough in the crosswind section, so I don't know if he'll make it through the first five stages here at this year's Tour de France. But my wild card selection has to be Thibaut Pino that could do something amazing and even move himself up in the top three of the general classification if we had that return of form from 2019. This year's Tour de France is shaping up nicely, and I want to point one big thing out here for Team Ineos. I think having two Slovenians, I'm talking Tadej Pogacar and Primoz Roglic, battling each other out will give Team Ineos the best possibility to win this year's Tour de France. I don't think anyone from Ineos have the same level as the two Slovenians. So having two Slovenians make it through this first dangerous week of the Tour de France, starting the mountain stages, is in the benefit of Team Ineos if they want to win the general classification. If not, they have to have both of the Slovenians have some kind of accident in the first week here at the Tour de France that'll cost them some kind of time on the general classification. Otherwise, if we're looking at only one Slovenian making it out of the first week of racing here at the Tour de France, Ineos are in another predicament just like they were at last year's 2021 Tour de France where Jumbo Visma and UAE Team Emirates knew the only riders to watch outside of themselves were Team Ineos. Tadej Pogacar knew never to let Richard Carapaz go anywhere on the general classification and so just marked Ineos out completely. Starting these final weeks here, the last two weeks of the Tour de France, if the two Slovenians from UAE Team Emirates and Jumbo Visma are still riding on good form and attacking each other and causing hesitations all over the place, that is going to be magical for a team like Ineos, especially if they can come into the final weeks here with three guys on the general classification. Danny Martinez, you got to be calm as a bomb. Yates, same MO for you. And Garrett Thomas, if you can get through the final weeks of racing here at the Tour de France without any crashes or mishaps, 40 kilometer TT for Garrett Thomas is right in his wheelhouse. So Garrett Thomas, third on the podium right now in my selection. But if Tadej Pogacar, Primoz Roglic, if they play any cat and mouse with each other, Garrett Thomas has a chance of winning the 2022 Tour de France. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I'll see you real soon on Beyond the Coverage or the Butterfly Effect.